Work is a rubber ball. If you drop it, it'll bounce back. The other four balls, family, health, friends, and integrity are made of glass. If you drop one of these, it will be irrecoverably scuffed, nicked, perhaps even shattered. Was it very strong or cool? Let's focus on Savannah. What would Savannah Brandt prefer to be? A stay-at-home mom or a working mom? Savannah Brandt got married and became pregnant at 18, purposely because all she ever wanted was to be a mom. She delivered B when she was 19 and her ex provided well enough that she was able to stay home with her daughter. When she got divorced at 21, she graduated from being a teen mom to a single mom. B was almost two years old at the time. Savannah was fortunate to have the emotional and financial support of her mom and her grandma. She could freely leave an unhealthy relationship with B's father and raise her on her own. She spent some time living with her mom and she started college. And then when B was about 18 months old, her stay at home mom days ended and she went to work with the help of a home daycare she connected through social media. By the time B was four, her father stopped showing up. It was hard, but she raised her without the help of a partner. By this time, she was working full time as a paralegal and was no longer receiving financial support from her family. Child support came so inconsistently, so she budgeted their life without accounting for it. She put B in a private school for kindergarten and during breaks and on snow days, she took her to the same home daycare. Savannah transitioned from stay at home mom to working mom. In fact, she was glad to be out of the house. She was glad to have some distance from the whining, the potty accidents, the tantrums, the pretending to like playing with dolls all day long. She was happy to have her own life outside of her motherhood. The transition was not easy though. Working full time, paying for after school daycare, getting home late with barely any time to squeeze in dinner and showers was draining. She went through a lot of drive throughs and made a lot of spaghetti. They ate on the couch almost every night. There were many ways that Savannah failed B, and she didn't even realize it at the time. When a person focuses on just staying afloat and getting enough sleep, he or she doesn't get to spend a lot of quality time with their kids. As a result, the kids spend more time on screen. Being a young single working mom was exhausting and isolating, but Savannah made good mom friends through social media and they met every Monday night to watch The Bachelor while the kids played. No doubt it helped her through and brought her company, but something else also happened. Being surrounded by those friends though, Savannah also got a reminder of what she didn't have. They were all married and stay at home moms. They had the life she always wanted, the life she so naively thought she would have when she got married. She wished she'd chosen B's dad differently. She wished she'd chosen a partner who loved his family and could support them emotionally and financially so that she could stay at home and raise her. As B got older, they got busier. No matter what she'd wanted for them, she had to work and provide. B started with co-curricular activities. First came year-long gymnastics, then seasonal sports. They attended birthday parties and play dates as well. There were school fundraisers, Girl Scouts, homework and projects. Savannah was trying to maintain her own life as well. She tried to work in the occasional sleepover with grandma when she could so that she wouldn't lose her sanity. She spent more than just a few nights crying to her mom that she just needed a break. Her mother also had been a single mom and here Savannah was repeating the same cycle. Savannah was always able to give B just enough, but never what she deserved. Savannah was always the tired mom. She was always the yelling, burnout, overworked, stressed out mom. Savannah was single for five years before she met her fiance, Chris. 
Chris had been married and divorced and had three kids of his own. He was and is everything Savannah never knew she needed from a partner. Chris allowed Savannah to grow. He acknowledged the struggle she'd been through as a single parent and gave her the time and the grace to grow into the person who could be half of a partnership. And believe it or not, it was not easy. It was not an easy transformation. Savannah was used to doing everything on her own, never having to answer to anyone or explain herself. Chris loved her for who she was, but provided her with the space to reflect on what kind of mother and woman she wanted to be. When Chris introduced his kids to them, she became distinctly aware of how spoiled B was as an only child. How spoiled Savannah had let her become because she was so focused on just getting them to everywhere they needed to be every day. Becoming a blended family was a big change and challenge for everyone. B went from an only child with a single parent to the second youngest child with both of the parents. They were all forced to grow, to be more patient and to be more understanding. Through months of love and communication and plenty of therapy for everyone, they've come a very long way. The kids don't always see eye to eye, but they have made lots of progress and it always makes Savannah smile when they play together. Savannah still works in the same law firm she started with as a paralegal. They have been amazingly generous with her and her schedule, accommodating her so that she can pick up the kids every day from school. Because when you think about it, who can afford after school daycare for four children? Without their generosity, their family schedule would have been impossible to maintain. But even though she leaves work early every day, the calendar often feels outrageous. They alternate weeks with Chris' kids with their mom on a 50-50 schedule. The days they have the kids are filled with laughter, but they are also filled to the brim with stress for Chris and Savannah as the parents. They are committed to activities, school, sports, mental health, physical health, and tutoring related every single day. For four kids, they have 11 commitments per week, 11. She can't believe the number is real. There are weeks they don't make it to every activity for their own sanity and for theirs. Three of those activities are bi-weekly. Really, it's only two activities per kid per week. Something fun and physical, gymnastics, jujitsu, and something educational or mental health related, tutoring or therapy. Whatever one of the kids wants to quit something, they fully support that. The last thing they want is for their children to feel as burnout as they do. Unfortunately for them, the chauffeurs and wallets of operation are all very happy and committed to their activities. But what about them, the parents? They're exhausted. They rarely eat out. Imagine the bill for all six of them. And they never do drive throughs Typically, they divide and conquer. And when they finally get home, they cook, clean the kitchen, and try to fit in a half an hour of TV or board game time with the kids. The stress of trying to fit it all in is sometimes overwhelming. After the kids finally go to bed, Chris and Savannah will just lay on the couch thinking how they have to do it all again tomorrow. All the sports, the therapies, tutoring, on top of them both working full-time jobs and trying to maintain their home. Savannah never thought she would truly miss being a stay-at-home mom because it's hard. She also used to never understand what a stay-at-home mom did all day after their kids went to school. How easy it must be doing be to do nothing until 3 p.m. Very soon she realized she was mistaken, but now as a full-time working mom to four, she gets it. Those stay-at-home moms get the laundry done. They shop for groceries. They pay the bills and clean the house. They take the car for an oil change. They schedule doctor's appointments and put dinner in the crock pot. They finally take the shower they've been too tired to take for three days. And hopefully, Hopefully, 
for a very brief period, they sit down and relax for a short while. It's because when those kids get in the minivan at three, it's going to be chaotic until every activity is completed for the night. The homework, then the dinner, and then the lights go out looking for another busy day. Kudos to those moms. Savannah feels those who work all day long to raise their children and simultaneously organize their home sweet home are just great. But what about Savannah? She doesn't get the laundry done during the day. She doesn't get to preheat the oven. After the kids are in bed, the house is still a mess. The dog's hair still needs to be vacuumed. The laundry still needs to be folded. Heck, forget folded. It hasn't even been washed yet. Working moms are definitely going to be happy with this bit of news from Savannah. Savannah tells these moms, you are not alone. It's okay if the kids have frozen nuggets and macaroni for dinner. It's okay if Johnny has to miss baseball tonight because you just can't possibly be an adult escort. This is your life too, and you deserve to be happy in it. And if that means foregoing every extra responsibility or commitment you've made for one day so that you can wake up tomorrow feeling refreshed and more productive, do it. Take a break. It's good for you. And it's good for your kids as well to see you prioritizing your mental health. You are a strong, wonderful, capable parent. And you are also a strong, wonderful, capable person. Give that person full credit because you're doing great. And the most important, make friends with like-minded parents. What is needed is a strong support system that you can lean on, drink wine with, take turns driving to soccer with, and above all, you can vent to. Next, utilize social media. Join local Facebook groups. Interact and learn lessons from those who have gone through similar struggles. Ignore the dishes in the laundry for one night so you and your spouse can catch a movie, take a walk, have a talk, or just play cards. The most valuable point to be noted is, every day your children get older and they will come with busier and more complicated schedules. Let them handle it on their own. It also means they can wash their own laundry and pick up their rooms, do their homework without you hovering, and toast their own egos. Here comes the most effective one from Savannah Brandt. Embrace the chaos. Cry if you feel like it. But remember, you are not alone. So guys, like, share, and inspire. Of course, change lives by ditching the guilt. Negotiate for flexibility. Stay in the game. The love, it's all yours. <laughs>